Learn to spin your silk in secret, where God unfolds untold mysteries of your being and seeing in solid solitude. Joy emerges from sorrow. Wisdom weaves through pain and fine fabrics of faith flourish in the recesses of your soul. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I uh, am so glad to be with you. I think I missed something there in that poem, but hey, no one's perfect. Good morning. Woo! This is Janie Seltzer, and I am here in the Sacred Garden for a short garden devotional. I'm going to turn it around. You can see Rudy is headed down towards the prayer chapel here at the Sacred Garden of Hidden Life Ministries, where I am just so honored to be the spiritual director here as well as on the Zig Ziglar International uh, community, for the community. Yes, yes, yes. It is a beautiful, glorious morning. Yes. I want to sh let you breathe with me. Let's breathe together and take in the beauty. Take in the presence of God here in the sacred garden set apart for his glory. Good morning, Janie Wells. Good morning. I see all of you coming on. If you would let me know who you are and where you are, that would be wonderful. If also you would begin to like and share this, um, we, would, we would be able to spread around the joy of knowing a living God, the living God, the Lord God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Let me see if I can redo the poem that I spoke at the beginning. Learn to spin your silk in secret, where God unfolds untold mysteries of your being and seeing in sacred solitude. Hmm. Joy emerges from sorrow, wisdom weaves through pain, and fine fabrics of faith flourish in the recesses of your soul. There we are. So as the dogs bark and life is what it is, I am going to talk with you about how to uncover your deepest desires. Let me turn the camera around. Here we go. There we are. So I, someone is coming to the garden right now and that's why the dogs are barking. Yes, good morning, good morning. Uh, uh, everyone has surprises and unexpected events and we just had one here, but we're going to continue on to discuss together in this short devotional as I lead us now in prayer to, un to ask the Lord God to uncover our deepest desires. Father, I thank you for my friends around the world. Thank you that we all live imperfect, perfect lives. For you are the God of the universe and upon you we depend, not on ourselves. I pray for my friends, Lord, that you would lay your hand of blessing upon them, that they would drink deeply of your spirit. Come Holy Spirit, comfort, comfort your people, Lord. I pray as we gulp or sip, hmm, as we do step in to a new day or in the day, may we end it and walk in it in peace. This I pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. I couldn't help, you know, it was subliminal. Rudy is gulping away in the nearby um, pond. It's not a pond, it would be a fountain, right? And he's gulping away, and I'm thinking about us gulping in the beauty and the love of God. So let me tell you where I've been. We'll take a few minutes to talk about it and where I've been in scripture, rather and how it might help you to discover more about your own deep 
desires. You know, our culture is more impulsive and compulsive, compulsive as it's ever been. Uh, life is challenging all around, everywhere around the world. There are challenges. It doesn't matter where you live. And if we don't know how to uncover our deepest desires and pursue them, we will be lost in a wilderness. And my desire is to help you relocate yourself squarely in the presence of God. So where I have been reading lately is in Psalm 27. If you have a Bible, turn to Psalm 27. I love the, the Psalms. Uh, most of them were written by David, as probably most of you know, who was a shepherd boy first, uh, long before he became the king of Israel. And he learned um, the most about having a rich spiritual life when he was tending his flock, his father's flock actually, on the hills of Judea. Um, he um, was close to God because he was in a place of quiet, of solitude. And I must say, if you, I don't know if I said it already, if I did, repeating is good. If you desire to have a rich spiritual life, you must develop solitude. You must, you must. I feel like a one band, uh, one string guitar sometimes, but it's a, it's a string that needs to be continually stroked because, um, or because, first of all, so few are doing it. And second of all, it's essential. Um, we're going to see this in Psalm 27. I'm going to read the whole Psalm. We will not be able to cover it all, but I want to read it all because I want you to listen meditatively to what David says. I want you to um, see how he uncovers his deepest desires and what we can learn from that. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why am I afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray, O Lord, be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, yes, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me. Hmm. Oh, God of my salvation, even if my mother and father abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Teach me how to live, O oh Lord. R lead me on the right path. For my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done. With every breath, they threaten me with violence, yet... I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. So friends, this psalm is loaded. It's loaded with honest emotion by David. David was never in a safe environment from a worldly point of view. When he was out in the fields with the flock, the wolves would come around. 
when he was invited into Saul's court, um, Saul became jealous of him and literally wanted to kill him and he had to run for his life. When he became the king of Israel, problem after problem arose around him, not to mention the problems within himself, that greatest of all. And yet, what we see here is how David uncovered his deepest desires. I want to say that we are born as children with de infants with desire. It is our natural instinct. We crave food, that is a God-given gift. We crave affection, that is a God-given gift. We want and need to look into the eyes of those who truly see us, that is a God-given gift. And, though, and desire fuels us all through our life. Um, we desire many things, um, and some of those things lean us away, take us away from the Lord. But, but many of those desires, many of the desires that we have bring us closer to the Lord. For example, the need for protection. That is a desire. I need to be protected. And I know that everybody feels vulnerable, everyone. And if you have, if you don't feel it, just wait, you will. You will be in a situation where you feel vulnerable and afraid. And so you cry out to God for safety, even if you don't know him well. That's a good thing. Sometimes um, need, great need, can drive us into the heart of God. I had a conversation with a woman uh, who, who came to our house as an Airbnb guest. She had no desire for God. She had no knowledge of God. She was raised in Bulgaria. She had no need for God. She became extremely prosperous. And, um, and what she related as she was telling me and some of my friends her story is no matter how much she had, it was never enough. Maybe that's you. You, you have many possessions, but you need the next bright and shiny object, or you want the bigger condo, or the nicer car, or um, the more handsome husband, or um, the, the more powerful job. Um, she, she had everything. She went from zero to way beyond anything I can even imagine. And, um, and yet one day she pulled her back out. She was a real, she was a real estate agent and, um, she, she somehow tweaked her back and she couldn't move. And she lay stretched out on her bed in this incredibly, um, well-appointed condo with high ceilings overlooking the ocean. Um, she was in New York. She had a, a Mercedes Benz parked in the parking garage, she had fine jewelry, she had everything fine, and yet she was empty and she was in pain. The grace of God, actually even unasked for, came powerfully upon her. And she said she really had no understanding of why God was so merciful to her. She had gone to church, but nothing ever really meant anything to her. Maybe that's you. You go to church, you hear a sermon, you say, well, that's nice, and you leave. Nothing has impacted you. It takes, friends, the power of the Spirit of God to awaken us to new life. And that's exactly what happened to her. The power of the love of God poured over her body and, and, and like electricity and literally just lifted her, not off the bed, but lifted her body and healed her body instantaneously. The drink of love, the ocean of love, <laughs> Rudy here, drinking, drinking, the ocean of love that came over her was more than she could have ever dreamt of, more than she ever could purchase. It was more. And uh, from that moment on, she realized that all she desired had been given to her, instantaneous, just like that, a gift from above. Hmm. That's exactly 
what Jesus told Nicodemus. The wind blows wherever it wills. We hear the sound of it, but we don't know where it comes from or where it is going. Yet, the one who is born of the Spirit, not of the flesh, is born into new life, born again. Friends, what we see with David is that he was, he, he starts out this psalm. I'm just going to wrap it up with a quick overview and, and a prayer. The overview is that he, he starts out with a statement, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And, and so he recognizes that, but he's in dire need for being protected. And he, he, he asks for protection. He, he is assured that God will protect him. He will hide me in his tent, David says. He will protect me from my enemies. And notice the enemies are all around him. And the enemies are, are close, too close for comfort. He even suggests that even if his mother and father abandon him, only God is, is able to help him. Um, he, he is aware of all this and and I really want here's what I want you to see above all things it's right in 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 the midst of all of this conversation David comes to the sudden awareness that there's really only one thing that he desires and I I want you to think about your desires and dig deep for what you really want how do you uncover it? You must be still. You must dig through the rubble of all the stuff around you. And you must at least, at the very minimum, that's what I'm gonna say to you today, at the very minimum, be open for the Spirit of God to flow over you and to give you a taste of, of his eternal, eternal life and eternal life with him. David says, one thing I ask of the Lord, and that is what I seek above all things, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Friends, um, when everything has been said and done, um, that is all there is. David uncovered his deepest desires. He looked and he saw his enemies. He, he recognized his need for protection. He recognized that he needed to be um, 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 surrounded, not by re ultimately anything, but the presence of God himself. And he says, if, if I can live in the, in the house of the Lord, I will delight in his perfections. David recognizes that the Lord God Almighty is, is a perfect and holy God. And what happens when we discover that holiness and perfection is beautiful? We want more and more of it. Friends, it is all our heart desires. We are born with desire and that is a gift. We will eventually, if we keep moving towards the place of our deepest desires, discover that he is all that we need or want. And our life will change. We will still by his grace, experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In fact, that's a promise. And we will also know that it is not the gifts that we love. It is the giver. It is the giver that we desire. It is the giver that we yearn for. I want to end today with these words, not from another poet. Um, I started with a poem, that would be my poem, um, Silk. And uh, in the middle, we listened to David's po uh, poem. And now I want you to hear what John Donahue, excuse me, John O'Donohue says, 
Blessed be the longing that brought you here and quickens your soul with wonder. May you come to accept, may you come to accept your longing as divine urgency. May you know the urgency with which God longs for you. There it is, friends. The longing that we have, and even when they go off track, is actually a reflection of God's longing for us. David says in this Psalm, I hear you say to me, let me find this. Yes, here it is. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Hmm. Lord God, I, I pray that every single person listening to me right now would hear in their heart you say, hmm. come, let me talk to you. Hmm. And I pray that they will respond, yes, Lord, I am coming. Yes, Lord, I am coming. Holy Father, we have many needs, but we need most to have intimacy with you. We need most to know that we can abide with you in the secret place where you dwell. We need most to know that even if our body is ravaged, even if we lose what we hold most dear, we never lose you. We never lose your love. You will never abandon us. I pray for my friends listening that they would uncover by the power of your spirit their deepest desires. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would do the work like a mighty wind, uncovering them from all of their trappings of worldliness so that their eyes might see your glory and your beauty. And they will recognize that you alone are the one thing that I most deeply desire. Thank you, Lord. For hearing us. Thank you for comforting us. Thank you for drawing us to yourself. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for your beautiful, powerful work in our lives. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Abba Daddy. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Thank you for being with me today in the garden. I realize the sun is positioned behind me. Not the best view, but you got to see the beauty of the presence of God, and it is beautiful. So, friends, walk in the light of his presence this day and stay close to Jesus. He will protect you. He will guide you. He will guard your life, and he will be the essence of all that you desire. Until next time, goodbye.